Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. Today, we got a great one. What are the secrets to learning an NFL offense? How do you do it? What's the process? I'm going to take you behind the scenes, show you exactly how I did it 11 times. This should be a great one. Welcome to the QB School. Boop, boop, brrr. All right, first question, Alex Brine. Can you break down how players and coaches learn their playbooks? 67 likes. Yes, Alex. It's exactly what we're going to do. Nice one. I've been waiting for this question. This should be a good one. Now, I can't tell you how all players and all coaches learn their playbooks, but I can certainly tell you how I learned it multiple times. And really, I didn't make this up. I don't want to take credit for it. Jake DeLome, he was the backup when I got to New Orleans, went on to play for Carolina, a bunch of different places, a pro's pro. And he taught me exactly how he learned it. And I basically just hijacked it. And so what I did was he basically said, don't get overwhelmed by the volume, all the plays. You got to break it down. You got to chunk it and segment it. And the way you learn it is the way that you speak it. So really most plays are said, you say the personnel usually gets said first. So that forms who's in the huddle. So you got to learn the personnels. Then shifts or motions usually happen before the formation. So you want to learn formations, shifts, and motions. So you're going to learn it basically the same way that you say a play. So if you say the formation first, then the pass pro or the run play, then the pass concept. So it's kind of like whatever the pa whatever the formation is first, you learn all the formations. Then you learn the pass protections or run plays. Run plays are pretty simple to learn. And then you learn the pass concepts, how you call the pass plays. And then you learn the reads and all those things. So really it's personnel, formation, pass protection, concepts. And if you learn it in that order, and really you, it becomes less memorization and more chunking things together to better understand it. So you don't have to, when the coach tells you to play, if you're playing quarterback, you don't sit there and re, just regurgitate whatever they said. You basically chunk it so you can see it in your mind. First formation, pass protection, where are my hots? What are my side adjusts? Then the pass concept. And if you do that, you can kind of segment it to make it a little bit easier as opposed to say, geez, I have to learn a thousand pages of new language. Like that's not necessarily it. Once you learn how to play certain concepts, you just translate what an offense calls it. If they call it sword or you call it dragon or they call it, you know, Hank, it doesn't matter what they call it. You know how to play the play because you've learned how to play the play. You've learned the concept. It doesn't matter what the formation they call it. If it's two by two out of 11 personnel, you know, you can just regurgitate however they call it at that specific place. And so that's how I really went it around learning. Now, the other part about this, and I put this picture on social media not too long ago, I learn by index cards. That's just how I was when I was took school seriously. That's how I learn best. And so you learn really because you have to make the index card, right? You see people at school all the time doing this. Many of you probably did this yourself. And so it takes time to make these index cards. You're writing it by hand. You're making it. You're invested in the process. Then you learn it. You chunk it together, right? You do all the formations. You do all the pass protections. You do all the run plays. You do all the motions, the shifts. You do all the pass concepts and then you sit there and learn them over and over. And then it's up to you. It's just like a vocab card. So it becomes a new language that you become better and better at. And it's up to, you know, you have to spend time and invest in it, but that's really all it is. I'm going to show you a few of, that I have just so don't get overwhelmed here. This is 11 years this is over a decade in the league of offense. Oh, geez. Whew. All right. So here they are 11 years of index cards in the NFL, how I learned offenses. And again, we're just chunking these things. We're doing formations. We're doing pass protections. We're doing pass concepts. If it's a run play, easy to learn the run play. And actually, because I used to learn it this way, I used to think coaches used to uh, help me better understand new plays by kind of talking about it this way. And so what I used to do, actually, Adam Gase, I know he's under all sorts of heat in New York right now, but he used to tell me that it used to be like uh, seeing kind of blinders come down when he would tell me the play he would tell me the play and i would kind of blink for the pass concept blink for the formation blink for the protection and just kind of be able to see it in my head and i actually used to think about it this is dating myself now i'll give you two examples here one i used to think about it as like an old school overhead projector and so basically what i mean by that is when the first thing they say is i would see the personnel go down on the sheet then i would see the formation lay down on the projector then i would see the pass protection lay down on the projector and then i would see the kind of concepts though guys running routes go out on the projector so really it was like four sheets over the projector and that's how i would see the play so it would be like formation pass protection concept read defense all those things and so if you want to think about it a different way now another way that i probably t talk about it 
is almost like Photoshop. It's just like layers on layers, right? And get crazy here with two layers, formation and a pass protection. Then you put the concept on top of it. And so you just layer these things together. And then all of a sudden you have a play and you can just change out a layer or mix in a new, a new layer, different formation, new motion, shift, personnel group. And it's the same image. You've just changed one layer, changed one little bit about it. It looks totally different to the defense, but you've played the play. And that's how you'd be able to change all these plays and all these concepts and give different looks all the time. But again, back to how I used to learn it right here, index cards. Okay. Now this is going to put me on blast a little bit if I get these things wrong and I did not plant anything here. So we're just going to take a peek and see what I remember from any of these things. So right out the gate, we'll go blue. Hopefully it's something that I remember. Oh geez. It's a full play flank, right? Motion scat, right? 370 pump F shoot swing at a deuce. Yikes. Mouthful. Uh, I think this is like a corner pump with a little F shoot is usually like a, a wheel route probably to the, try to get the tight end. Oh man. I don't know if you'd be able to see this drawing. Again, yeah, a little pump route, holding it off, put two on one on the side defender. That's complex play. I feel like that was too hard for right out the gate advanced. Oh, these are all pretty tough. Queen left, draw pass right, 416 wide. This is just an in and a curl, the four and the six. I hope. Yep, easy. And I picked the hardest one here. Let's see if I can get a little easier here. One sec while I try to find something that a little more beginner ish. Drive with post and shake. Yikes. So drive route. We know how to do this one. I've got a full video on the drive route. Triangle read. Usually this is with an option with the post or a shake route. Shake route is just like a post corner. Different way to say it. Try one more. Oh man. It's a tough one. I'll go special cat middle with a nod. That's a tough one. I'll go special is just three by one verticals. When I was in the West coast system, cat is usually a corner comeback. A middle gives the opportunity of the middle, uh, number three vertical and a three by one to be able to sit somewhere beyond the sticks. Pretty simple concept. Just a mouthful. Uh, both Winston it's blurred out a little bit. That's just an out with a 10 yard hooks. So you see these things resonate. They just stay with me. They're like seared in my memory option, shallow cross. I mean, easy ones. So again, not a lot of formations in here. You learn the formations. I feel like you got to give yourself a chance, the pass protection, the most, probably the most important part. And then you get into the concepts and you really, once you learn the concepts and that's the critical part that I try to teach and try to talk about is don't memorize, you know, one route for your position. If you play wide receiver, rather learn the concept, then you can play any position. You play the quarterback. You don't have to memorize specific plays. You learn concepts and then you marry them together with formations, shifts, personnel groups. It makes everything so much easier. So that's how you learn it. So in short, you learn it formations, pass protections, pass concepts. From there, you give yourself a chance. And once you even learn it, once you get to the point where you can learn it, like this is a smash concept or this is drive concept. It doesn't matter if your team calls it whatever triangle cupcake, strawberry, you know that this is drive is drive is drive and we'll make it work. I know the read and I can play this play really quickly. And once I did it like that, then all of a sudden the transitions to new teams were a lot faster. People thought I was a lot smarter than I am. And I was able to continue to play and play because they thought I could soak up this information really quickly. Well, really, it was the process that I was learning that I thought gave me a big advantage. So next question, stick boy, can you explain why when player a goes down, it takes teams out of their game plan as viewers, we hear a backup comes in and a whole section of the offense goes out the window. Isn't a slant still a slant. Even if you didn't rep it that week to a particular receiver, that's a good question. Yes. A slant is still a slant, but throwing a slant to your best receiver or the person that you've Taylor made a certain section of your game plan against is not the same as throwing it to your number two receiver or number three receiver. Trust me, you want a, a play caller's job in most, if you break it down to the absolute kind of core elements, it's to get the ball to the best player as often as possible. That's kind of the essence of it and help them get as open as possible as often as possible. And so when that player's down, 
that kind of jacks the entire game plan, right? If the whole point of the game plan was to get the ball to your best playmakers in space as often as possible, well, if they're not in there, then yes, the game plan completely shifts. So is a slant a slant? Yes, it is. But would you rather throw a slant to the best player on the team as opposed to the fifth or eighth best player on the team? You know, if all of a sudden you're chunk, you're all of a sudden don't have a lot of depth in the perimeter, all of those things. So it's not the same. There's a way that all of a sudden when your one receiver is going up against their one corner, you feel pretty good about that matchup. But your number two receiver going up against their one corner might not be necessarily what you think is the best player getting the ball as often as possible. So you have to totally shift what you're doing. And now maybe you're trying to get the ball to the tight end or the running back or doing different screens. And so it does completely jack a game plan sometimes if you lose someone that you've tailor-made so many different pass concepts to try to attack and take advantage of matchups. Well, if the NFL is all about matchups or football is all about matchups, if you lose your best matchup, well, then you're kind of in scramble mode. Yes, you can have kind of a backup plan or auxiliary contingency plan if this doesn't work, if they do this, if we lose this player. But even if you have a plan, it doesn't mean that the plan is good. It doesn't mean that you're not in a whole lot of trouble. It's great to have a plan. But, you know, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? Well, get, losing your best player is getting punched in the face in a football game. And so you have to be able to adapt, absolutely. But throwing a slant against a, a different guy when it's not necessarily your best player, not the greatest thing you want to do. So maybe you do have to totally shift. Now we're going to go run heavy. Now we're going to run to a different side. If you lose a lineman that you're used to running behind or you love their capacity to do some sort of double team or pull and all of a sudden they're not in the plan, yeah, well, then you do have to totally shift. It's not the same having anybody pull or anybody do a double team or anybody hold the edge or anybody, you know, run a screen. You're trying to get the ball to your best players as often as possible. And when you lose your best player, then everything shifts. And so that's up to the play caller, the system, the offense to adapt and for our guys to be able to step up. Also, you know, next man up mentality. But is a slant a slant? Yes and no, unfortunately, no more often than yes. Adrian Robbins, you see a lot of 21 personnel in the NFL. In college, you don't see it it as much. It's a lot of 10 or 11 personnel. I know teams still run 21, 22 personnel in college. Why do you think that is? That's a good question. Uh, I think that there are a number of reasons why. It's a lot easier to recruit perimeter, bubble, slot receiver type guys than it is to recruit athletic dynamic fullbacks. They just don't exist. They're kind of a little bit like dinosaurs. Oftentimes in college, they're guys who either didn't make it at linebacker, didn't make it at D-line and transition to kind of stay on the team to being able to block. You know, not very many guys want to play running back and not run the ball. You know, that's kind of the prerequisite for most people who want to play running back. They don't want to play, you know, full guard, you know, is, is, is the term that you hear oftentimes. And so it's just a lot easier to recruit slot wide receivers than it is athletic dynamic fullbacks, in my opinion. And so that's the main reason you see it. I think it's more fun to be in an offense that's a little bit more spread out as opposed to more in a old school phone booth and but the reality is is there just aren't that many big athletic dynamic fullbacks that are available that people want to recruit on a yearly basis I think it's a lot easier to just kind of plug and play someone who didn't make it at a different position into the kind of the fullback role so that's probably the main reason in my opinion at college you don't see a lot of 21 22 personnel anymore it's just hard to recruit that fullback type position athlete student athlete so great question alex how hard was it to adjust to cfl style of play after playing nfl your whole life well uh the cfl is certainly a little bit of an adjustment i think honestly it's not that hard football is football throwing a football is throwing a football yes there are different dimensions in the cfl game different rules but i kind of love the, the rules it makes everything a little faster three down football trying to get a first down every single play there's no kind of first down cloud of dust it's first down try to get another first down as quickly as possible there's some you know unique nuanced rules i think the things that kind of take a little bit of while to get used to even if they're not that complicated for the quarterback is just everybody in motion right like everything is moving it's just a little bit cloudier i would say as opposed to kind of clean precision kind of looks that you're look to see in the nfl when you're playing quarterback so you just have to be comfortable with kind of the ambiguity of knowing that things will work itself out. Everybody's kind of moving at the same time, getting a rolling head start. And then the other thing is just the width of the field for me. The width of the field is a monster. Trying to throw that wide side go route is like a, trying to hit a unicorn. You know, it just doesn't exist. It's really hard. And so how you play that area of the field is a little bit different. But 
beyond that, I think the the movement of the wide receivers, the three downs, the kind of the D line having to be off the line of scrimmage to basically give you a third down. If it's third and one, you have a first down every single time. You know that type of stuff that you just don't know when you play, you know, American style football. But again, it's it's pretty much the same. It's just playing catch, blocking, tackling, all of those things. I think just the motion of it. And then the other thing about it is because everybody's in motion, it's a little bit less precise, I would say, about like depth and kind of angles that wide receivers are running. And so just a little bit more recess where it's like, hey, bro, go get open. You know, like you got this area, run this option route in this area. You can do whatever you want to get open. Who knows what they're going to be playing. We know you can beat them type of thing as opposed to being like, Hey, you got to run 20 yards, be two yards inside the numbers every single time. No excuses like that doesn't exist in the CFL, or at least it didn't from my experience. It's a lot more kind of, hey, go beat your guy. I trust you. I'll get the matchup I want and let it roll. And that kind of recess vibe, I, I would say, is a little bit more paramount in the CFL. But again, it's really good players. They play at a high level. It's good ball. It's 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 all sorts of fun. And it's a lot of fun. It's just the, the aggressiveness of the three down football is pretty cool. But then I again, the other thing I loved about it is quarterbacks could wear zero. So check this one out. Yeah, that's a good look slimming. Uh, I enjoyed my time in the CFL. It was a lot of fun. Great fans in Saskatchewan, too. Really cool stadiums. Great being able to kind of tour the entire country, too, playing in the league for a year. So I had all sorts of fun doing it. So thanks for the question. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully I shared some secrets that you can uh, to kind of take into learning offenses, learning how people learn offenses, being able to kind of better digest and kind of chunk and segment ways into being like, oh, it's not a massive playbook. I'm just going to learn the formations. I'm going to learn the pass protections. I'm going to learn the pass concepts. And all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more digestible. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, hit the bell, do everything like that. A little preview here. We might be doing some live stuff here pretty soon. So get involved with that type of stuff. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to talk about. Hit me with any questions you got. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one.